<sighs> All right. Well, I told myself I wouldn't make content around this, but here we are. I feel like I'm completely selling out, but on the other hand, I found ChatGPT useful and I feel like it's important to share how this tool has just benefit me in my work as a data scientist. Working with this has saved me at least four to five hours a week over the last three months that I've been experimenting with it. And I'm like somewhat excited to share how I did this with all of you. Also, ChatGPT told me to make this video, so I did. Hopefully this isn't the basic stuff that you've seen before. I tried to highlight use cases that were less traditional, but still created a ton of value in my work. I've also included extra tips on how other data people in the community are using ChatGPT for their work. So stay tuned for those. And at the end, I answer the question, will ChatGPT take my data science job? So the first way that I've been using ChatGPT is for creating data visualizations. When I used to do this, I often had to look up code and sift through documentation to create the exact specifications on the graphs that I was looking for. With ChatGPT, I can put into words what I'm trying to do, and it gives me pretty decent examples to work with. Let's say I wanted to make a heat map in Plotly with an orange to a purple gradient. I can type this in and it'll spit out a template for me to fill my data into. I find this three to four times faster than going through the documentation, searching Stack Overflow, and finding something that meets my needs that way. I've also begun asking ChatGPT about what else I can do to make my graphs more compelling, and it tends to give me a list of recommendations that are pretty good that also expand my knowledge about the library I'm using. In this case, again, it's pretty often Plotly these days. The key here is that I need to know what I want to create already, and ChatGPT allows me to get there quicker. The next way I've been using ChatGPT has greatly expanded my capabilities. I usually code in Python and almost avoid other languages at this point because I keep getting frustrated with the different syntax that's used. I found that ChatGPT has been really helpful when converting Python code into other languages. While I've used Java, Scala, JavaScript, C, C++, and other languages in the past, I'm by no means an expert in them, probably not even moderately skilled. I find that ChatGPT allows me to have more options to code in other languages either by translating code directly or explaining the different syntaxes to me. I'm most commonly using this to convert Python into JavaScript when I'm working with web-related tools. Right now, I'm doing this a lot for D3.js, which is a graphing library in JavaScript. All right, I won't lie to you. The next way that I'm using ChatGPT is a little bit controversial. The use case is for code summarization. I find this really valuable for myself as well for explaining my work to my clients. If I'm confronted with a code base that I haven't seen before, I'll ask ChatGPT to summarize it for me. Or if I write code that I'd like explain to my coworkers, I think it's helpful for that too. This might be one of the single best use cases for ChatGPT when non-technical people are working with technical ones. The reason this is controversial is because it can be a breach of intellectual property to put your company's code into ChatGPT. I would definitely recommend against this. Still, if you're working with open source repos or your work isn't sensitive, it should be okay. Okay, can I be honest with you guys? In reality, a large portion of the code that I write is just pure garbage. When I'm ideating especially, things I build are just super inefficient. And while I do have a master's in computer science, I kind of just blocked algorithms from my working memory. Big O is just an uncomfortably large letter to me at this point. I use ChatGPT to rewrite code that's more optimized for speed or for memory. I found that this actually helps me to improve the quality of the code I write as well. I play a little game where I try to think about how I would optimize my code, and then I see if I came to the same conclusions that ChatGPT did. I also know that AI can be wrong, and it definitely is a lot of the time, so I double check with real speed tests and make sure that I'm careful again what I'm feeding into ChatGPT. So these next few ways of using ChatGPT for data science were suggested to me by people on LinkedIn. I've since applied them many times in my normal work, and these are as good, if not better, than the use cases that I came up with on my own. So the first one is from Michael Atkinson, and he recommended that I try using ChatGPT to generate readmes for my code. So this was a really big win. Readmes are super important for understanding just what's going on in a code base, and it seems like ChatGPT can take away some of the overhead of creating good ones. I also found that I really don't know where to start when writing a readme, and it helps me to be able to work off of a framework that's generated for me. Next, I'm pretty sure that all of the gray hairs that I'm currently getting my hair short so you can't see them now, uh, but I'm pretty sure they're all from regular expressions. For those that don't know, regular expressions or regex are sequences of characters that identify patterns in text. This can be super useful when data cleaning if you can figure it out. 
ChatGPT generates this pretty reliably, and it also will explain it to you if you ask. So thank you to Wesson for this tip. Now, John Sharp gave me this next tip, and I really, really liked working with it. It's all about refactoring code. So sometimes you might need to go through and change the name of every variable in your notebook. Let's say you, you call something uh, variable three, and you need to change it to like a more reasonable name, like input variable or something like that. It can be really time consuming if this isn't a built-in functionality in your IDE. You can refactor all of your code and make mass changes just by asking ChatGPT to replace something like that. Now, this last one is kind of a bonus one because I don't personally use it, but I could see where it would be very useful. So comments are super practical for you or for another person to understand what's going on in your notebook. I personally like actually writing the comments because I leave stupid puns, but others might find that it's burdensome to do this and ChatGPT can help. Thank you to Dom John for that one. And I probably pronounced your name wrong, but I feel like it's the thought that counts. Again, I wanna make sure to warn people about putting your company's code into ChatGPT. Be sure that the things that you put in are not sensitive. Now onto the final question. ChatGPT is pretty impressive. Some would say incredible. And many would like to know, is it impressive enough to take my job as a data scientist or to replace data scientists in general? So first, I think that ChatGPT makes my job way easier. I can write a lot more code and I can make it more understandable to others. I don't think someone who's not trained as a data scientist who do my work even with the help of ChatGPT. So I don't think the every person or just ChatGPT in and of itself is gonna be taking my job. I really look at this tool as a multiplier, not something that will detract from my role. Technologies like ChatGPT have the power to change the role of a data scientist, but I don't think that they have the power to make the data science role in and of itself obsolete. I find that ChatGPT allows me to actually enjoy my work more. It allows me to avoid a lot of the tedious things and focus on the problem solving aspects of the job that I love. I don't think that those problem solving aspects, the things that are sort of in between the cracks are solvable by AI now or in the reasonably near future.